Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 19th of October. And in today's um, readings, uh, the first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 38. We read of how Jeremiah is bringing God's word, speaking God's word to the people of Jerusalem. He's saying to them that if you want to live, you're going to have to surrender to the Babylonians. Because if you don't surrender, they're going to overrun the city, they're going to kill you, and they're going to burn everything up. Now, what he was saying wasn't well received by the people, particularly the officials over there. They found it to be discouraging of the, to the army, that the army would say, well, what's the point of us fighting? If that's going to happen. When we, re when we move on to our New Testament reading in Corinthians, we read from Paul about how the service should be conducted. He says it should be conducted in an orderly fashion, that um, people who speak in tongues should speak, but only if there's an interpreter to tell us what they're speaking about. He further says that women should not be allowed to speak in church. And that's a whole subject for another discussion. But what I wanted to get across, or what I was thinking about today, is that very often we have an opinion which resonates with some people and obviously not with others because we can't say something that is pleasing to everyone. And the one situation that we have at the moment, which is a very hot potato, is this whole problem with Israel and Gaza. As we know that Hamas provoked Israel by attacking them and killing civilians taking people hostage. It wasn't a question of just killing people, it was a question of the brutality of it. How they attacked civilians, how they beheaded babies, how they killed parents in front of their children and children in front of their parents. How they caused huge trauma amongst the Israeli nation. And then we, re then we get further on about how Israel reacted to that, where they said they're shutting down the whole of Gaza. They're putting Gaza under siege. There'll be no water, no food, no fuel, no medical supplies, no humanitarian help whatsoever. Further, they won't allow people to leave Gaza, even people who are innocent citizens. And that is the crux of it. What Hamas did was unforgivable. What Israel is doing, I personally believe, is wrong. I believe it's morally wrong to starve everyone, including young children and whoever, innocent people in Gaza as a retaliatory move. A lot of people disagree with me, I understand that. I had quite an interesting conversation yesterday with an acquaintance of mine, and he was talking about his school days. He, he often talks about his school days, something that I personally don't understand, but anyhow. And he was saying that he didn't enjoy the school that he was at, CBC in Pretoria, because what happened when he was there, not when I was there, but when he was there, if there was a problem in the class and a few people misbehaved, the entire class used to get punished. And I said to him, well, that's what's happening today in Israel. And he said, yes, but I don't want to go down that route. That's a totally different story. And I said, it's not a different story. The only difference is that when you were at school, you didn't like it because you were involved. You saw it unfair 
that if somebody misbehaved, that you would also be punished. And yet, you say that what's happening in Israel and in, in uh, Gaza, the way that Israel is behaving is 100% acceptable. It's a double standard. And I just want today for us to pray about the situation in Israel and in Gaza. It's more complex than what I'm phrasing it at the moment. It's historically a long-standing situation. It's a question of Muslim against the Jews. And I suppose by extension the Muslims against Christianity. However, I do believe that there must be some way to resolve this issue. Not for us as humans possibly to figure it out, but by God's grace, there must be some way to come to a conclusion and to come to some equitable arrangement. And I just ask you today to keep everyone in that situation in prayer. Those we see as being the good guys and those we see as being the bad guys as well. Everyone there needs us to pray for them, to pray for guidance, to pray for, for forgiveness. Christ, when he died on the cross, said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We have a situation where I believe morally things are being done incorrectly. And if you disagree with me, please, I'd like to point out that criticizing a policy of any government doesn't mean that we approve of the opposition to that particular government. I just ask that you would consider what I'm saying, that you would spend time praying it through. And have compassion on those that need it, over there and locally. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we continue with morning prayer. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. God feeds his people with the bread of life. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
So now we just bring to mind the things that we've done or haven't done that um, that we need to bring before God and lay it at the foot of the cross. Things that may have been something that God didn't want us to do. Or maybe we didn't do something that he was asking us to do. Maybe we've done things that have upset our neighbours, our loved ones, our friends and family. Or neglected to do things that we should have done for those very same people. And we just think of these things now as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to our psalm for today, which is Psalm 37, and we're reading from verse 21 through to verse 40. The ungodly man borrows but does not repay, but the righteous is gracious and gives. Those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those whom he has cursed shall be cut down. If a man's steps are guided by the Lord, and he delights in his way, though he stumble, he shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds him up by his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, but I never saw the righteous man forsaken, or his children begging their bread. He is ever gracious, and he lends, and his children shall be blessed. Turn from evil and do good, and you shall dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. But the unjust shall be destroyed forever, and the children of the ungodly shall be cut down. The just shall possess the land, and they shall dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and his footsteps will not slip. The ungodly man watches out for the righteous, and seeks occasion to slay him. But the Lord will not abandon, will not abandon him to his power, nor let him be condemned when he is judged. Wait for the Lord and hold to his way, and he will raise you up to possess the land, to see the ungodly when they are destroyed. I have seen the ungodly in terrifying power, spreading himself like a luxuriant tree. I have passed by again, and he was gone. I searched for him, but he could not be found. Observe the blameless man, and consider the upright, for the man of peace shall have prosperity. But transgressors shall be destroyed altogether, and their posterity of the wicked shall be cut down. Deliverance for the righteous shall come from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 38 verses 1 to 13. Shephatiah, son of Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pashur, Jehuqal, son of Shalamiah, and Pashur, son of Malkijah, heard what Jeremiah was telling all the people when he said, This is what the Lord says, Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine, or plague, but whoever goes over to the Babylonians will live. They will escape with their lives. They will live. And this is what the Lord says. This city will certainly be given into the hands of the army of the king of Babylon, who will capture it. Then the official said to the king, This man should be put to death. He is discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city, 
as well as all the people by the things he's saying to them. This man is not seeking the good of these people, but their ruin. He is in your hands, King Zedekiah answered. The king can do nothing to oppose you. So they took Jeremiah and put him into the cistern of Malchijah, the king's son, which was in the courtyard of the guard. They lowered Jeremiah by ropes into the cistern. It had no water in it, only mud, and Jeremiah sank down into the mud. But ebed Melech, a Cushite, an official in the royal palace, heard that they had put Jeremiah into the cistern. While the king was sitting in the Benjamin gate, ebed Melech went out of the palace and said to him, My lord the king, these men have acted wickedly in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet. They have thrown him into a cistern, where he will starve to death when there is no longer any bread in the city. Then the king commanded ebed Melech the Cushite, Take thirty men from here with you and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. So ebed Melech took the men with him and went to a room under the treasury in the palace. He took some old rags and worn-out clothes from there and let them down with ropes to Jeremiah in the cistern. ebed Melech the Cushite said to Jeremiah, Put these old rags and worn-out clothes under your arms to pad the ropes. Jeremiah did so, and they pulled him up with the ropes and lifted him out of the cistern, and Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the guard. Yeah, in our first lesson. We say together the song of Zechariah, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free, free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading today is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verses 26 through to 40. What then shall we say, brothers, when you come together, everyone has a hymn? or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two, or at least three, should speak one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should be quiet in the church and speak himself, and speak to himself and God. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. As in all the congregations of the saints, women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only people it has reached? If anybody thinks he is a prophet or spiritually gifted, let him acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's commandment. 
If he ignores us, he himself will be ignored. Therefore, my brothers, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Now ends our second lesson. We, s we say together the song of the church. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. And the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. And so together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Our collect for today. Lord of the feast, you invite everyone to your banquet. Keep from us all that distracts us, and stir in us the desire to respond with gladness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, you have safely brought us to the beginning of another day. 
Defend us by your mighty power that we may be kept from all sin and safe from every danger and enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we just pray for those in Israel and Gaza. We know that they are in a very, very difficult situation at the moment. We know that the Israelis are retaliating in the way that they believe they should retaliate. I know that I personally think that they are not doing the correct thing by punishing everyone in Gaza for what Hamas has done. What Hamas has done is, of course, totally unforgivable. It's inhumane, it's barbaric, and it's condemned in the strongest, strongest possible way. However, I believe that starving the general population of Gaza is just as horrendous, just as barbaric, and against what I believe Jesus would want done. He said once, love your enemies. However, we just pray that common sense and, and God's will would prevail. And I'm not sure how that's going to pan out over there. I'm not sure that any of us can translate God's will in that particular circumstance. But we just pray, Lord, that you would take a hand in that conflict, that you would help people to see a way forward where they can somehow come together and find common ground and that they could live in peace together. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen.